Thank you and welcome once again to the ongoing fourth edition of the India Mobile Congress that was inaugurated just a short while ago by the Honorable Prime Minister of India. We're now at the thought leadership session that features as speakers two of the industry leaders and partners. I first invite Mr. Nunzio Mirtillo. Mr. Nunzio Mirtillo is the Senior Vice President, Head of Market Area Southeast Asia, Oceania and India of Ericsson. He was previously the head of the Mediterranean region where he drove business growth and deepened customer relationships with operator customers. Mr. Mirtelo, please share your thoughts with us. Distinguished guests and media, good morning and namaskar. As the principal sponsor of the India Mobile Congress, it is my proud privilege to welcome you today to India Mobile Congress 2020 in its new virtual format. The virtual nature of the event has allowed me to join you from my home, and this really shows the importance of connectivity. The telecom sector in India and globally has provided the digital infrastructure that has allowed people and nations to stay connected during the pandemic, and has allowed us to work from home digitally without impacting productivity. A year ago, I mean, no one would have considered to organize a virtual AMC, but here we are, I mean, together again, to discuss and deliberate on important topics around inclusive innovation, smart, secure, and sustainable, which is the theme for the IMC this year. I would like to congratulate IMC and COAI for taking this forward this year, and so bringing all of us on this digital platform. The Indian government's Digital India program, with its focus on empowerment, inclusion, and digital transformation, has its foundation on connectivity, and the mobile networks in India continue to deliver on that promise. At Ericsson, we continue to stay close to our customers, communication service providers, to help them provide the best possible network quality and connectivity to the Indian consumers. Ericsson has been in India since 120 years ago, since 1903, and we have been partnering with our customers in India for the introduction in India of all mobility technologies, 2G, 3G, 4G, and now we are ready to go for the 5G journey. I mean, we have all together experienced the massive adoption of 4G technology in India in recent years, and 4G remains the dominant technology in 2020, accounting for 63% of mobile subscriptions. I mean, India today has the highest average traffic per smartphone user at 16 gigabit per month. The mobile consumption continues to increase, boosted by the rapid adoption of 4G and people working from home during COVID-19. For example, the average time spent on mobile broadband has gone up by 2 to 2 hours per day in India, during the pandemic versus a world average of one hour only. So we have these positive trends of high consumption in India, which I believe are very positive, as we cannot underestimate the importance of broadband and connectivity towards the social and economic development of the country of India. Our global studies shows that on average, a 10% increase in mobile broadband adoption ratio leads to a 0.8% increase in gross domestic product. So connectivity is good. The telecom equipment that Telexon supplies to Indian telecom service providers is made in India. And in fact, we were the first to manufacture in India and we started back in 1994. And we still do so in Pune facility where we produce 4G and 5G equipment radio equipment for the Indian market, of course, but also we export from Pune to other countries in Asia. I mean, Ericsson, as you also may recall, I mean, we were also the first to launch and to show, actually not launch, but to show and to demonstrate 5G in 2017, three years ago. And during the last three years, I mean, 5G, 5G rise very, very, very fast. And now we are live in 70 networks across the world. And the consumers uh, on, in those networks today are getting a first-hand experience of the technology 
better performance, ultra high speed and reliable, very reliable. And I'm confident we are likely to find more transformative India relevant use cases in India, right? Where the speed, latency and security of the 5G network will be key. Based on our technology leadership and experience with 5G deployment across the globe, I mean, at Ericsson, we are in a good position to support India on its 5G journey. I mean, we are ready to help our customers switch on 5G whenever they are ready to do so. Basically, we are ready to go. I mean, networks are as important to countries as roads and electric grids and airports. I strongly encourage India to prioritize actions to incentivize investments in the digital infrastructure including speeding up the availability of spectrum and making spectrum more affordable. That is very important. An encouraging policy framework, I mean, will provide make a seamless 5G launch and help realize the India digital vision, which is a great vision. Once again, I welcome all of you to three exciting days of deliberations and discussions at the India Mobile Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mirthilu. May I now invite the chairman and CEO of KPMG in India, Mr. Arun Kumar, an accomplished global executive with experience spanning multiple sectors from high technology to government and many geographies from Silicon Valley to India. Most recently, Mr. Kumar served as the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Global Markets and the Director General of the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service in the Obama administration. Welcome, Mr. Kumar. The stage is yours. Honorable dignitaries from the Government of India, delegates and colleagues from industry, good morning. It is both a pleasure and a privilege for me to be speaking at the fourth edition of the India Mobile Congress. The India Mobile Congress has established itself as a seminal event in the telecom, media, and technology industry. KPMG in India is proud to be associated as knowledge partners for this event. This year has reinforced trends with respect to global supply chain realignment, new business models, disruption in industries and alternative ways of working, all of which are strongly underscored by the critical role of technology. The government has played a vital role in encouraging the development of the digital economy through landmark programs and initiatives, such as the National Broad Broadband Mission, JAM, that is Jandan, Aadhaar and Mobile, Digital India, national digital communications policy and incentives under the Adhanirbhar Bharat program. These platforms have helped in fostering inclusion and enabling transformation. Digital services will be critical for Future Ready India Inc. Powered by cloud, connecting the front, middle and back office will ultimately drive what we at KPMG call the connected enterprise. With this background, it is my pleasure to announce the launch of KPMG in India's thought leadership, TMT Industry CEO Outlook, smart, secure, sustainable, in association with the India Mobile Congress and the Cellular Operators Association of India. Our report shares the insights gathered through a survey of TMT industry CEOs on how the TMT industry is involving in this extraordinary period of opportunities and challenges. The research and surveys carried out as a part of this report indicate that the outlook of the sector remains positive as 52% of the CEOs express their confidence in the overall growth prospects of the sector. The survey also indicated that 52% of organizations have accelerated initiatives around digitization of their operations and creation of next generation operating models. As an increasing number of businesses move towards digitizing their operating models, three prominent trends are emerging. One, the pandemic has compelled businesses to transition toward future full or partial remote working environments. 
several organizations expedited the implementation of digital initiatives that were stated for the next three to five years. Two, emerging technologies like IoT, blockchain, and AI are projected to lead strategic investments with robotics and augmented reality, virtual reality emerging at the top. Businesses which delay embracing these technologies may run the risk of falling behind in terms of efficiency, productivity, and customer experience. And three, while there could be some delay in the launch of 5G, considering the current COVID-19 situation, with an elongated 4G monetization period, in a hypersensitive market, the country can potentially stand to benefit from a delayed adoption through the availability of more mature business use cases, numerous prototypes, and a collaborative environment to ensure profitable and sustainable 5G deployment on a large scale. With digital maturity comes digital risks. A significant rise in the usage of digital tools from remote locations and constantly evolving geopolitical dynamics have stoked fears of threats to cybersecurity and data privacy. Over 56% of CEOs surveyed highlighted supply chain disruption as a near-term risk, while more than 30% of CEOs perceived cyber risk as both a near-term risk and a long-term risk. Investors, telcos, industry bodies, businesses, export work groups, and government must come together to work on the implementation challenges to advance India towards a smart, secure, and sustainable digital future. I trust this report will be an exciting, insightful, and interesting read for you. My heartfelt thanks to all the teams involved in making this event a success. And best wishes to IMC to scale new heights as a platform which enables ideation, innovation, and collaboration to build a bright digital future in India and indeed in this part of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Mirtilo. We now invite voices from the industry to speak to us. First invite Mr. Sanjay Mashruwala, Managing Director, Reliance Geo Infocom, a telecom veteran of three decades, Mr. Mashruwala previously served as president of RIL's petrochemical division and played a key role in the rollout of the optical fiber cable network across the country when Reliance Infocom launched its mobile services in India about a decade ago. I invite Mr. Mashruwala to address the conclave. Completion of 25 years of milestone for mobile communication is a memorable occasion for many of us who have traveled this route together. Nearly two decades back, while the country was just starting this journey, our founder chairman, Sri Dhirubhai Ambani, had a vision that a phone call could be cheaper than a postcard, which was the most common form of communication then. And with that vision, we began our journey introducing RIM, Reliance India Mobile, exactly 18 years ago. At Reliance Infocom, we had said, Karlo Dunya Mutti Me. What was not said but surely implied was that we meant Karlo Dunya Sabki Mutti Me, a task we are pursuing relentlessly. And with the introduction of 4G, we precisely mean dunya, the broadband data services that bring World Wide Web. Of course, this has not been a simple journey, and by no means it is over. 2G was like boarding an aircraft, 2.5G pushback, 3G taxing to runway, and 4G takeoff. The Udan has just begun. And we have to go high and far. We all understand where we need to go. Our destination is to realize the full potential of digital India by accelerating the operationalization of cloud native services, IoT, blockchain, AI, AR, AVR, and so on. 
and in delivering education, health, governance, entertainment and more for an all-inclusive India. During the past few months, the unprecedented pandemic has proved the need for an affordable broadband-centric digital Bharat. And the same has been reiterated by our Honorable Prime Minister time and again. All of us understand the importance to accelerate the indigenous capabilities of 5G and other related technologies so as to deliver on supplier diversity and achieve the stated goal of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Though India is the number one in terms of mobile data consumption, we are significantly behind as compared to other nations, be it on fixed line, fiber to home, 5G services, the type and size of cloud services, and utilization and so on. And we all know what needs to be done, and this include the ban and amount of spectrum needed, managing the cost of spectrum, simplifying the permissions and mitigating and removing ROW difficulties and cost, allaying any radiation fears, all have been discussed time and again with limited progress. It is critical that we recognize data communication as an essential service. Rest will fall in place automatically. And 5G is not just about mobility. It is about ubiquitous high-speed data through any transmission technology and media. And of course, 5G is also about related infrastructure, devices and services. 25 years back, we were far behind the developed world in the area of telecommunications. Today, we have made considerable progress, but yet not where we need to be. Let us all collectively work together for India's leadership in 5G and beyond. Thank you. May I now invite the MD and CEO, India and South Asia of Bharti Airtel Limited, Mr. Gopal Vithal, to address the meeting. Mr. Vithal, in his role as MD and CEO, is responsible for defining and delivering the business strategy and providing overall leadership for Airtel's India and South Asia operations. Previously, he was with Bharati Enterprises, where he was the Group Director, Special Projects. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gopal Vithal. I am delighted to be here for the uh, India Mobile Congress. In 2020, as you know, COVID has had a very significant impact on all our lives. In fact, India was the largest nation to put more than 1.3 billion people under a strict lockdown. Besides the shock to the overall supply chain, many millions were deeply affected from an econo uh, economic point of view, causing stress on demand and consumption. Through this crisis, the telecom industry was the backbone for India. Every one of us has been privileged to have played a part in keeping our customers connected in these uncertain times. From children having to take their classes online, to increased digital payments, to businesses finding new ways to keep their employees working, to allowing our customers to have a few moments of entertainment in an otherwise dreary time, we have each played a critical role in their lives. Now step back and imagine that there was no 4G, no digital networks. How would we have done this? What would have happened to education, to work, to payments, and more? This is truly the power of Digital India. And it is this same Digital India that has fundamentally changed our business at Airtel. Today, more than half of our business is online. 40% of our high-value customer acquisitions happen online and then are delivered straight to the home. Half of your complaints are resolved online. Every one of our 1 million retailers collect payments from our customers through our Mitra app. Over 50 million customers now use our payments bank to deposit or withdraw cash from their neighborhood retailer. And we have over 165 million users on our digital assets. So our business today is both agile and being designed to meet the consumer omni-channel. But that's not all. There is something more. And that, I believe, is a power of purpose. 
At Airtel, I've heard innumerable inspirational stories where our teams have gone above and beyond the call of duty to keep the nation connected during COVID. Our engineers set up networks, fixed faults, climbed towers braving floods and rains. In fact, our NOC, which had 1,500 people, was operating with just 15. Our broadband teams installed 2x the connections as work from home grew. And by the way, each installation, as you know, takes three to four hours. Our sales teams opened up 100,000 new stores, groceries and chemists. Our engineering and customer experience teams declared a war on failure and identified root causes of problems through daily stand-ups every morning at 9 a.m., seven days a week. Every one of these amazing people just did their job. No one forced them to do it. We did it because it is our purpose. And it is this purpose that defines everyone here at ETA. To enrich the lives of every Indian by providing them an exceptional experience. And it is the same purpose that is also enabling us to meet, where, meet our customers where they are and changing our business model dramatically. Why is purpose important? For two reasons. First, the massive opportunity. We believe there is so much more to do to serve India better, to improve India's productivity, and ensure every Indian benefits. The growth of our industry is uniquely positioned to deliver this through digital technologies and the partnerships we strike. The second reason is that the Digital India vision can be achieved only through a deep understanding of customers and the problems to solve for them. To do that, we have to be able to adapt the mindsets of our teams, build the right skills, and do it in an agile way. In short, we will deliver what India deserves when we redefine our purpose to serve the needs of every Indian. And in so doing, reimagine our businesses to make that happen. As a leading telecom player, we will play our part. But I believe there are three things if we have to truly deliver the vision of a digital India. An India where every citizen has the right to be connected, to be productive, to be educated, regardless of where they live or who they know. First, we must have an open ecosystem. In the technology world, as you know, standards are what make an ecosystem. Many years ago, there was a fork in the road of which technology to back, CDMA or GSM. GSM won, not because it was a better technology, in fact, CDMA was the better technology, but GSM won because it was the more accepted technology. More companies in the world embraced GSM, and the rest is history. So GSM won because it became part of the global ecosystem, and CDMA died. In much the same way, there is sometimes talk of India having its own 5G standards. This is an existential threat which could lock India out of a global ecosystem and slow down the pace of innovation. We would have let our citizens down if we allowed that to happen. Second, we must create an open India ecosystem and promote applications development for India and by India. For this, we have to come together. We have to set aside our differences and be part of one, the private sector, telcos, equipment players, device players, manufacturing companies, IT companies, everyone can benefit as the growth of technology makes us all more productive. So we should collectively sign on to create a 5G ecosystem. And if there is one thing that the IMC can make happen, it is that. Third, we must have enabling policies that continue to keep the access to technology affordable affordable and easy access to lay out fiber, which are the nerves of a digital India, affordable spectrum that allows us to invest in building networks that India deserves. In conclusion, let me say that COVID has in many ways put the entire digital India vision on steroids. If we can, as a country, embrace global standards, create an open ecosystem for India, and leverage this to reimagine our businesses, while having a predictable and simple policy environment, the entrepreneurial energy of Indians will deliver digital India. Thank you very much.
We also have with us the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Vodafone Idea Limited, Mr. Ravinder Tucker. He has been with the Vodafone Group for 25 years and previously served as CEO of Vodafone Romania for three years and CEO Vodafone Partner Markets in London. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tucker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My warm greetings to the Honorable Minister of State for Communications, Education and Electronics, NIT, Sri Sanjay Dotreji, distinguished federal panelists, senior government officials, industry leaders from across the globe and from India, and esteemed delegates. I'm pleased to be addressing you at what could be one of the biggest virtual events for the telecom and digital world this year. The year when we celebrate 25 years of mobile telephony in India, and one which turned out to be transformational in many ways, underlining the critical role that telecommunication plays in the lives of people. With a billion mobile users, telecom became the lifeline of India, keeping the nation connected, the economic activities running during the biggest health crisis faced by humanity. At Vodafone Idea, our network warriors, along with enhanced network capacities and contactless services ensured that our customers and businesses remain connected. Today, India is the second largest telecom market in terms of subscribers and has the largest mobile data consumption globally. This has become possible due to massive private investment in the telecom sector over the last 25 years. The industry has the right structure with four operators providing adequate competition and innovative services to Indians across the country. The digital transformation in the country over the last few years is built on the foundation of a ubiquitous broadband wireless network across cities, towns, and over half a million villages. And it would not have been possible without the vision of the Honorable Prime Minister and enabling government policies. On our part, we have invested nearly $30 billion over the years and remain long-term committed to be a partner for Digital India. We believe in enriching the lives of millions of people with access to real-time information, avenues for commerce, and an enhanced quality of life. We have built the 5G-ready network architecture and incorporated technologies to cater to the smart cities smart machines, and smart citizens. From connected cars to connected devices for farmers in agriculture heartland of India, we are using IoT and AI technologies to bring about a positive change in people's lives across all social demographic segments. From automated factories to enabling work from home, online education, healthcare, e-commerce, banking, gaming, and digital entertainment, to driving financial literacy, women safety, and women empowerment. Our GigaNet is enabling businesses and individuals to stay ahead and thrive. Looking ahead, we have two distinct opportunities and role for operators. First, catalyzing India's specific 5G use cases creating innovative platforms and partnership models that will positively impact different industry verticals like healthcare, education, smart cities, among others. Second, getting the bottom of pyramid citizens to adopt digital for ensuring inclusive growth. Rural teledensity is just 59% versus 134% urban teledensity and nearly 450 million existing mobile subscribers still are not connected to broadband or don't own a smartphone. We are preparing to address both these opportunities, building on our strong network, IT, people capabilities, and customer connect. We intend to collaborate with existing ecosystem players and vibrant startups to drive this exciting future. 
And there are some challenges too, related to tariffs, taxes, levies, spectrum availability, and pricing. The government understands these and have come up with the progressive national digital communications policy. And now they are driving the implementation of this policy. I remain optimistic that with the government support, the industry and our company will script India's success story over the next 25 years too. In the end, I thank all of you for joining us here and wish IMC a huge success in its new digital avatar. Thank you very much. It's time now, ladies and gentlemen, for the launch of the 2020 edition of the IMC KPMG Thought Leadership Report, titled TMT Industry CEO Outlook, Smart, Secure, Sustainable. The 2020 edition of the Thought Leadership Report, put together by the IMC Knowledge Partner KPMG in India, evaluates the current thinking of telecom, media and technology organizations, popularly known as TMT, in response to the pandemic and their perception towards challenges and opportunities brought about by the digital acceleration. These perspectives have been collated through the help of a survey conducted by KPMG in India amongst industry leaders. We would like to thank the teams that work together across IMC, COAI and KPMG in India for bringing out this timely and insightful publication. Friends, I hereby release the Thought Leadership Report of Inclusive Innovation, a Smart, Secure, Sustainable. May I now request the CEO of the India Mobile Congress, Mr. P. Ramakrishna, to please propose the vote of thanks. Good morning, honorable dignitaries and esteemed guests. It's my pleasure to have you all at this fourth edition of India Mobile Congress 2020 inauguration session. We are truly honored to host this electric mix of dignitaries from across government and the TMT industry and academia to deliberate discuss the roadmap of a smart, secure, sustainable growth of TMT sector in the nation as a whole. This special edition of IMC is being held virtually for the first time in the light of prevailing conditions. It has been a commendable achievement for us and it would be unfair if I don't present my vote of thanks to the government, Department of Telecommunications, TRI, COI, 170 sponsors, exhibitor partners, our speakers, our knowledge partner KPMG in India, Dreamcast, our virtual partner, George P. Johnson, our experiencing marketing partner, USIBC and the IMC board and team for their support and quickly adapting to the new reality of digital world and embracing the challenge of presenting the Asia's largest technology and communication event virtually. We sincerely hope that you will find the carefully curated agenda exciting, engaging, and topically relevant and are able to make most of having the entire TMT industry from India and globally on one platform. Thank you and enjoy the show.